know, there's a lot of important things you got to have to be a good tennis player. But one of the most important, in my opinion, is to have a good grip. And the reason I say that is through the years, I've seen all the good players who have good sound strokes come up with a good grip as well. Number one, we go to the Western grip. And the Western grip was named because back in the old days in tennis, the balls used to bounce very, very high, particularly on the concrete courts out in California. So people developed this kind of a grip to handle high balls. And the hand was directly under the handle of the racket. And it is good for high balls. But if you move to a situation where you have to hit low balls as well, really this grip doesn't work. You also have a problem with the backhand. Moving around to what we think is the more conventional way to hold the racket. A lot of good players do it, not necessarily all of them. But we call it the shake hands grip or hitting the ball with the palm of your hand. This is the Eastern grip. You simply slide your hand down to where it's comfortable on the handle. And the key thing to remember is the top of the handle has two bevels. The bevel on the right side forms the V between the index and the thumb finger. This is a very fine grip, and it's very, very good for low balls or high balls. You can do anything with that particular grip. Moving over on top a little further, we come to the Continental Grip. And the Continental Grip was developed by the English because their game was predominantly played on grass, and they found that hitting low balls, because on grass they're skiddy and low, that a little bit of a flick of the wrist using this kind of a grip was very, very successful for them. The one good thing about the Continental Grip is it's identified by the V switching from the eastern side on the top right half of the handle to the left bevel. The V is formed by the thumb and the forefinger over here. I was saying one great thing about the Continental Grip is that it is practically the same grip that you'd use for a backhand. And so this is the grip that if you're going to be a single grip player using the same grip for the forehand and the backhand, you should use this kind of a grip. It's a good one. And so far, we've been talking about the various grips for the forehand, but there is a, a change necessary for you to produce a good backhand, unless, however, you are that continental grip player where the forehand and the backhand can practically be the same grip. The reason it's necessary from the eastern forehand or the western forehand to make a grip change is to get some help mainly from your thumb. And I'm going to demonstrate something that will show you what I mean. If you're in an eastern forehand grip which is like this and you tried to hit the backhand you'd see that there's very very little help, no thrust at all because the wrist is broken, it's limp. And I'd like to suggest something that if you turn this over you turn it into a judo cut. So simply turn that knuckle of the forefinger away from this side of the racket to this side, which forms the V. Immediately, you get some extra help from the thumb on the back side. Now, you don't have to use the thumb the way I'm demonstrating here because it can get help this way, meaning you have it overlapped, and a lot of players do that. A lot of good players are a little further around here. They tend to sort of push the ball, but somewhere in between there, try to get some help from that thumb. It's very valuable for your backhand. Now, through the years, my playing career, I found out that the eastern grip where I was hitting the ball with the forehand like this and the back end over here, it worked great for me. And I'm not saying that uh, you should use it. I'm saying that get out there and try improvise. Somewhere in between this western and the continental and the eastern in between, there's a grip for you.